Hi, it's Adrian Cat from Advanced Dental Artistry. What do you do when a dental implant fails? Well, if you ask any experienced clinician who places a lot of implants, do all implants, are they all successful? Well, the answer, of course, is no. When we look at research done over decades, and you're talking about 30 or 40 years, we know that the survival rate for implants, although probably one of the highest in all dental fields, is around about 94 to 98%. Therefore, if we actually place 100 implants, we're probably expecting around about a 2 to 6% failure out of 100. So the real problem is that there's two types of failures we see. One is latent failures that happen many years after an implant's actually placed. And during this time, usually there's two failures, of course. One is actually a cosmetic failure where the gum tends to shrink around the implant or maybe the bone starts to be lost around the implant and cosmetically the implant doesn't look great. Um, and then there's, of course, situations where a patient may get what we call periimplantitis, which is when they get, or I suppose the simplest way to do it, is gum disease around the implant. And this is actually quite rare. What I want to talk about today is when the failure happens very quickly. And this is usually in the first three months. And this is usually a biological problem where the body does not accept the implant and we get what we would term a rejection. And therefore the bone does not grow into the implant. So there's no osteointegration or that bone to implant interface. What will happen actually early on, this will happen within the next, the first three months of placing an implant, is that the soft tissue will start to grow around the implant. And this will actually lead to a lot of bone loss. So the most important thing to do when an implant fails, when an implant's actually placed, is reviews. An implant has to be reviewed in the first three months to ensure that it heals correctly. If there's any signs that the implant has not taken, the most important thing is to remove the implant as soon as possible because if the implant's left, more and more bone will be lost and therefore there'll be less bone in order to place an implant. I want to actually talk you through a case actually to Dave Daniel, who was actually a heavy smoker and he had diabetes. So he had already health issues that actually limited the survival of his implants. When we're placing all implant treatment, it's important to actually talk about risk factors to patients. And some of them can be health, so it can be certain things, for example, diabetes, if they smoke, um, if their health is actually compromised, um, and of course hygiene. Um, there are certain things that will actually limit the survival of implants and therefore the survival rate or the success rate actually drops in these patients. If the patient understands these risks and they're still happy to go ahead with treatment, they have to be aware that there is a higher risk of an implant failing. So in this case, you can see the implant has actually failed. We couldn't actually see him for around about six months because he worked away. So at the three month mark, we noticed that the implant hadn't healed. He was a heavy smoker, he had diabetes, and we basically said to him that there's a risk that this implant hasn't taken. We then wanted to review him about four weeks after, but unfortunately because he worked away, we probably didn't see him for around about five or six months. You can see in this photo that we've got no bone surrounding the implant on the x-ray. So from here, the idea was then to actually look at removing the implant. Because he wasn't all on four case, it was a failed all on four implant, it meant that the other three implants were successful and fine, but we had to remove this implant as soon as possible. So on day of surgery, we've actually got him back in here and we have actually had to remove the implant and change the implant site slightly closer to the front of the mouth, place a new implant that was in the correct position for where his bridge was, and then re-engineer the bridge that he already had so that he could have that fitted on the same day. It's quite a complex process to actually do, and we did also bone graft where the site of the old implant was in order to ensure that the bone healed correctly in this case. So with all cases with failed implants, whether a single implant or especially on an all on four case because all four implants must be healthy, the most important thing is to act quickly. We must remove the implant as soon as possible. We sometimes may need to graft that site and there are usually situations where we can, if we act quick enough, place a new implant in the right position to reuse the bridge so that we don't have to make a new bridge for the patient. All cases with failed implants are very different and it's important to actually understand that although implants are very successful, there are cases unfortunately where biologically the implant doesn't take and the implant must be removed. Of course, there may be costs incurred in actually doing this treatment because it is a revision of the case and this is something that must be discussed. If you have any questions, please give us a ring at 100 Smiling. I look forward to one day seeing you in the practice.